This is a PJ Harvey song dedicated to Sheila Nagig. Project Sheila is an Instagram page by an anonymous Irish artist who feels Sheila is an important symbol against misogyny. But the question is, what are Sheila Nagig's? Sheila Nagigs are seemingly erotic stone carvings of female figures predominantly found in Romanesque churches. What's special about them? Well, these sculptures consist of an old disproportionate woman squatting and pulling apart her vulva, a fairly strange thing to find in a church. Hidden in plain sight and often overlooked or perhaps ignored by vicars and congregations, these figures can be seen across the churches of Ireland, Britain, and even France and Spain. Their exact beginnings are an enigma, but they seem to have originated as early as the 11th century. These carvings can be found on secular buildings too, like a stable door in Hedden Hall, Derbyshire, and various castles in Ireland. John Harding, Founder of the Sheila Nagik project has spent over 20 years tracking down sites of Sheila across Ireland. He explains, Sheila is the Irish form of the normal name Cecil and gig is actually English slang and it means a woman's bits like genitalia and breast. Much has been written and debated about these mysterious stone sculptures and Sheila's unapologetic sexual display has sparked intrigue, shame, and mostly anger. Mid-19th century censorship laws led to the violent destruction of these sculptures. Professor Georgia Rhodes, who wrote a scholarly article in 2010, said, We don't have to look at these carvings with just one interpretation. Rather, let's look around at all the possible interpretations and see which one seems plausible? Number one, an evil warding figure. European churches often depict them as grotesque evil warding figures to keep demonic spirits away. The vulva is considered as a gate between life and long life and the carvings are positioned mostly over doors and windows. Therefore, it is understandable that these airy figures are intended to turn away harm from the holy structures. In Church Stretton in Shropshire, a Sheila Nagik sits right above the door where the dead is brought in and out of. Professor Rhodes believe that in Church Stretton, Sheila is saying that you come out of the earth, you return to the earth. You come out of me and you return to me. You can ignore death as much as you want to, but death is going to come. Number two, the divine hag. One set of historians argue that Sheila Nagig represents a pagan goddess appearing as a lustful hag. The carvings depict facial scars and a disproportionate body in an explicit manner, thus propounding that this was a way to warn the common people against the sin of lust. Number three, an occult. Like the one at the Rock of Cashel in Co Tipperary, Ireland, she is hidden at the top of the castle walls. For someone to carve the symbol at such an inaccessible place, there might be a real power embedded in the figure. Professor Rhodes recalls meeting a young curator from the National Museum in Dublin a few years ago, who had been asked to do an inventory of the Sheilas the museum holds. But, he stated, some of his colleagues were so worried that the Sheila might cause undue arousal in him. Number 4. Fertility Goddess Sheila Nagig has been seen as an embodiment of the cycle of fertility, overarching human procreation and death. In some places, brides are required to look at and seek blessings from Sheila before weddings suggesting Sheila's role in fertility rites. 
Margaret Murray, an Egyptologist, was the first researcher to view Sheila Nagig as a female icon of reverence and goddess of fertility. In her research, she says that Sheila Nagig is more similar to the Greek female fertility figure Bobo, the companion to the Egyptian queen Isis. In India, the fertility goddess Lajja Gauri is shown in a similar birthing posture. Across all these representations, secondary sexual characteristics like breast are minimal. The vulva in the case of Sheila Nagik and Bobo and the womb in case of Lajja Gauri are personified as goddesses. So this categorization does seem plausible. Dr. Barbara Freitag, a former lecturer in intercultural studies at Dublin City University and author of the 2004 book Sheila Nagig's Unraveling an Enigma, was the first to place academic muscle behind the idea of Sheila as a goddess or talisman. She was fascinated by Sheila's in the 1980s when a US academician was forbidden access to some of the areas in the National Museum of Ireland in Dublin. What could possibly be so frightful, she thought. And of course, the prevailing theory at the time was that these were portraying the evil of lust and that they were put up on churches as warnings, which is absurd. Why? Because they are high up, she says. You would almost need binoculars to see some of them. Sheila is called grotesque, and the term grotesque is an ancient ornamental style from wall paintings in caves, which means grotte in French. With the evolution of art, history and culture, this low art became synonymous with the lower part of the body. The term has lost its reference, and today it has become a lens of morals labeling and demeaning art that does not conform the hegemony. Thus labeling Sheila Nagig as grotesque serves no purpose other than subverting the discussion of true origin. There is a story distortion malignation of these figurative carvings where British colonists of Ireland viewed the natives as descendants of Africans to rationalize and explain their enslavement. Therefore, even though the Sheila was a part of European culture and history, the colonists used primitive concepts often depicting Africans as hypersexual to explain the sculptures. Sheila Nagigs were framed as products of exotic African sexuality instead of treating them as a legacy of Anglo-Christians. Moreover, the academics and research of the early 19th century were mostly male-dominated professions. This led to the most apparent use of belittling language to describe Sheila Nagik. Sheila was thus viewed through the eyes of femininity and an off-putting language of disgust, while using words like hideous, grotesque, absurd, frightful-looking was common. For the anonymous woman behind Project Sheila, the rediscovery of the history of Sheila might bring a mind shift, especially among the younger generation to choose their own spiritual symbols away from the oppressiveness of the Catholic Church. Sheila Nagik disrupts the stable boundaries of gender, sexuality and expected standards of femininity. Her physical characteristics, the baldness, protruding eyes and tongue, distorted body, and most importantly, the large vulva, question the dominant notions of femininity. The maternal figure's gaping vulva portrays a transition between life and non-life. The lack of textual and verbal records about Sheila, whether destroyed, vanished, or forbidden, indicates how misogynistic historical interpretations were drawn. What do you think about Sheila Nagigs? Do let me know in the comment section. If you like my work, please consider donating to me on Patreon. And thanks to all my active patrons. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos from our channel. 
frame of reference.